Good morning, Coronado students. I hope you are having a fantastic morning. I'm Alex Johnson. And I'm Jesse Crumb. With robotics coming to an end, we checked out what these mechanical cougars are doing to better their future. Let's check out the liveliness of robotics. So my position, basically our sub-team is involved with getting our name out in the community. So we do different demonstrations by taking our robots places. So we do many events like the What If Festival and Cool Science Festival. And we take our robots down and we get to teach kids about STEM and kind of get them interested in technology and first. Students should consider joining robotics because it's a great opportunity for you to learn a lot of different skills, not only technology, but you learn about business and all kinds of things that can help you later in your life. So we've already gone to our Utah Regional. We left um, a few weeks ago and we did really, really well. Um, we were picked for the Second Alliance and uh, were considered for many different awards. We're also going to Denver next week right before spring break and hopefully we can play and win and we're also going for the Chairman's Award which is the most prestigious award in first. So for us with the robotics team, what we're looking forward to is just getting out there and being able to compete. Um, this year, the Colorado Regional, which is we're going to be going to here in a couple days, actually has some of the top teams from around the nation coming to it. So it's going to be extremely highly competitive. Uh, some of these teams, are their robots are built by NASA. So it's going to be kind of interesting. We're a student-built robot with a student-led team, and we're going to be competing against these large powerhouses. So. Um, it'll be nice to see how we can fare against the top teams in the world. One of these teams, I'm sure, will be in the champ World Championship Finals by the time it's all done. So, what robotics is, is it's, I think every student should get involved with something with the school, whatever that might be, and robotics gives students an opportunity, students who like technology, they like building things with their hands, they like that challenge, I mean, it's a tough challenge. Um, you really want to think of it more almost like a varsity sport than you do just a club because the time commitment and everything else is about equivalent to a varsity sport. So if it's something like that, if you want to get out there and really compete and really you know, test yourself and see if you have what it takes to be an engineer or even a businessman, because um, running this team is a lot like running a small business as well. So we have people that would like both the technical side and the business side. They, uh, they're the finance, the running a business, the marketing, the media, all of those types of things. We have a sub team that just creates videos for us, you know, and things of that nature. So there's lots of areas that you can get in there and we treat it like a team. So that idea that you're gonna build that team mentality is extremely important to us. Each year we have to build a new robot from scratch, so it's always just getting ourselves prepared for that. Um, it's working, so during the summer we're working on our community outreach out there, hoping we can touch the younger generation a little bit and get them inspired to do something with STEM or robotics or something of that nature. And then in the fall it's about, okay, let's train the new people. Let's teach them what we can about robotics, because in order to join the robotics team, you, have to, you don't have to know anything about robotics. We'll teach you, we'll show you that, we'll get you up to speed. Well, that's awesome. Mr. Smith was robotics' greatest invention. Now, let's send it over to Derek Hernandez with a look ahead to the seven-day forecast. Thanks guys. This week we're going to be seeing highs throughout the high 60s and through the low 50s, with lows fluctuating through the 20s and 40s. This week it's going to be mainly cloudy with a bit of sun peeking through on Saturday, but it's going to be still fairly cloudy. I'm Derek Hernandez with the weather, and vote for me for vice president. Thanks Derek. Bringing it to a more serious note, on February 14th, 2018, Parkland, Florida suffered one of the deadliest school massacres in American history. 17 people lost their lives and 17 more people were injured. On March 14th, 2018, one month later, Coronado High School participated in, in the national walkout to protest gun violence and honor the lost lives at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. <laughs>
Last Wednesday was the Coronado walkout and we had tons of students it was like a max, mass exodus from the building and everyone went outside into the courtyard and we held a peaceful demonstration for 17 minutes to honor the victims of the Florida shooting which happened a month ago. I was actually really proud of the crowd themselves because I know there had to be at least a couple people who were out there just to skip class but as soon as we started reading the names everyone was Silent. really respectful and quiet and it was just pretty amazing. There were multiple reasons for this event and everyone who came had their own reasons but one of the top ones was to honor the victims of the Parkland shooting but also to show Congress that we can't be ignored and this problem of school shootings can't be ignored any longer because school campuses are becoming increasingly less safe due to gun violence. Like so many people came out and I, I looked into the crowd and I saw some people that like had openly said to me like I'm not doing this, like, this is dumb, whatever. But they were there, they were still there supporting this movement regardless of what their beliefs are. So that in and of itself I think just blew my mind and it exceeded my expectations and I think it went very well. I think the narrative in this country about mass shootings and guns is changing and I'm really proud of students for leading the way. We're lending more credibility to the fact that this is an issue. I'm also really glad that our generation is starting to become more politically active and involved in our government as a whole, mm -hmm. which is just definitely something I've been seeing mm -hmm. because a lot of my friends and people I know have been participating in protests or um, organizing things like this and I think that's really great. And it's not that no one wants to help. Like, we understand that the adults in our lives are so supportive and want this to happen for us, for us to be safe. But school shootings themselves are something that are greatly impacting all of us in this school. It's teachers, it's students, it's parents. It will cause the country to maybe take a closer look at the fact that we are literally begging for our lives. This was seen, and seen across the country by vast majority of people. And I don't know, if if they don't hear us now, I mean, when will they, right? It's inspiring to see Coronado students and so many others nationwide speaking up for our safety, affecting legislation, and working towards limiting school shootings. Enough is enough. On a lighter note, Coronado sports teams have been performing well. Here's Jesse with the sports. Boys track got fourth place at the Pueblo Centennial Invite, and the girls got third. Baseball beat Sand Creek 16-5. Girls soccer beat the Vista Ridge Wolves 3-0. Girls tennis lost to Lewis Palmer 3-4, and boys slim lost to Lewis Palmer 69-109. Our girls tennis teams have recently started their season and already played a few matches. We took a look to see what they're all about. One of the things that I'm really focusing on right now at the beginning of the season are fundamentals in terms of uh, the basics of, of footwork and, and just body movement and positioning because I think if we can do those things well then good things are going to happen uh, in terms of our strokes and in terms of the points we're playing and then obviously points lead to games and from there hopefully we're rolling. The one thing, one other thing I would just say would be that you know we have uh, regionals this year in early May should be a tough regional, but I think we know we've got positions out of out of that region before we can do it again, and, and I think it's just how much can we grow between then and now. My hopes are that, you know, my goal every year is to get everybody to stay, if at all possible. Um, I think kind of the lesser version of that goal is to qualify as a team, so five out of seven positions through to state. Uh, we've had two meets so far. The first meet was against um, Air Academy at home, and then our second meet was against Mullen last Tuesday at Mullen. My season right now is going very well. Um, we Our first three matches were our toughest matches of the year, so very competitive. I play almost five to six hours a day um, here, and then I play at the Garden of the Gods Club with my dad. Um, so I'm working very hard to make it to state this year. I was very close last year, so this year I want to be my year. My hopes for the team this year will um, probably 
that we all qualify for state. I know that's like a high goal up there, but um, I feel like my team got it this year. Like we had um, all of our doubles last year qualify, so I know for sure that this year will be our year to make it to state. When you're taking that year and taking it early, you're automatic. You have to if you want to have any shot. You're automatic. You have to if you want to have any shot. You're taking it early. You're automatic. You have to. Wow, looks like they're playing well. Their next game is tonight against Fountain Fort Carson. Go check them out. With spring break coming up, there are always high expectations. Shows like MTV's Spring Break have created a delusion of grandeur about what spring break should look like. But what does it look like for the average Joe? We peered into the lives of Coronado students to find out. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, that wraps up another episode of Kruger TV. We hope you all have a restful break full of binge watching and procrastination. I'm Jesse Crum. And I'm Alex Johnson. Join us after spring break to find out what's happening in your hallways. Stay classy, Coronado. Do 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 do